Hello and welcome to Dell's Gaming. I'm Dell and this is my character having a nice relax looking out onto the sea in the designer. So uh, no enemies in sight because we're in design mode so that's always handy. So this is part of the how to um, series and we in this episode we're going to be looking at engines uh, because once you have um, built your lovely new vessel you will want to make it go forwards which will require propulsion and if we go into the propulsion menu if we go into build mode and let's say it's a nice little uh, vehicle that needs a propeller you'll notice um, that you'll need power so force input per input unit um, and power use per input unit so you'll need to provide your vehicle with some sort of power if we put this here just for a second, just to think, we have no power in here. And on our right hand side, you'll notice there is four um, icons in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, the top one is ammo, then you have oil, and then power and the experience. Actually, the experience is the, your character's experience. But the main important part for your vehicle is um, oil and power. So we're going to go just quickly through how do you build um, a simple um, engine for your ship and we're just going to edit, um, even this up. Um, so the basics of building an engine and getting it power enough to um, power your ship and other items on your on your vessel. Your, you'll need power for more than just propulsion. Um, primarily it's propulsion but you'll also need it if you need to produce ammo if you need to uh, power lasers um, and force fields if you want to put a force field onto your vessel you'll also need power from the engine now for the moment we're just going to take this out of the uh, water using the caps lock key just so it's a stable platform and I haven't got to worry about it tipping around and our view going into the water so the basics of an engine. The first most important part is the engine block. The engine block is where everything has to connect to to create engine for the vehicle. Um, so the engine block has to is the primary component. So we're just going to put one component down. Now when we hover over this, we can see we've got a certain level of items on here. And that includes the uh, power usage, or sorry, the maximum power output, which is the primary bit we're trying to increase. Um, the current usage, if the vehicle is using any power. Uh, fuel usage, which we want to keep low. That's the efficiency of the engine, how much fuel it's using per power. And how many items are then connected to this um, uh, engine block. To connect items to the engine block, the main connector is the crankshaft. So the crankshaft is connected directly to our engine. Um, and you will notice now the crankshaft has now gone up to one. And you can just keep on adding in these um, blocks. You'll notice that I cannot add them in any other direction. It will actually allow me to add them in that direction and if we put cylinders on top you'll notice it says not connected so in the direction of the engine you can only add them forwards you'll auto um, so you need to make sure that your your crankshafts are connected to the engine initially so we've got four crankshafts there and if we hover over our, our item it says four crankshafts there if i try to put um, connect a crankshaft in any other way. Let me just get the right block here. There we go. Um, if I try and connect a crankshaft in, in any other direction, you'll notice it still only shows shows four crankshafts. These, frank, these crankshafts are not counted. If we put the, put the uh, crankshafts in the wrong way around, so the forward direction was this direction, if we put them into the back, it's also does not connect. We are showing only four crankshafts. So number one important, make sure you put your crankshafts 
on the correct side of the engine and in line with the engine block. So that's the number number one. So we've now got some five crankshafts to put other components on. What are the other components? Well, as most um, reciprocal engines, it needs a cylinder. The cylinder is where we get the, the um, squeeze, uh, suck, squeeze, bang, blow going on, basically, where the oil is converted into power. Now, what we'll do is we'll just put a single cylinder down. So that is our single cylinder. Cylinders can be connected to the top of a crankshaft and also to the sides of a crankshaft. If we go here, you'll notice we now have three cylinders connected. They cannot be connected um, next to each other after that, so that we can't put cylinders next to cylinders. And we cannot put cylinders on top of cylinders. Although it does allow you to place them there and also cylinders on top of the engine block or next to it also does not count towards the cylinder count of the engine. So we'll just go back to one block for this moment just to show you the other blocks which are capable. So cylinders are connected to the crankshaft. That's nice and simple. There is a, one other connector um, which we will... Um, which is a slightly more advanced one, which we won't look into now. It's not a day one block, which allows you to go up from the side. But we, as I say, we'll look at that in a future one. This will be enough to get your basic engine running. Now, efficiencies of an engine at the moment, we've got a maximum power of 1.21. Now, theoretically, we could just put lots of cylinders on this and we'll just see what that gives us just for giggles and you'll notice that we've got up to a power of 35 for um, 15 cylinders uh, but that isn't very efficient uh, I forgot to look at the efficiency side of that but the if we just go here um, fuel usage 0 .0 0.0 0.01 which isn't too bad but we can do a lot better than that and obviously get that power up. So 35 for 15. There is now some other blocks you can use to make this cylinder more effective. Number one is the carburetor. So basically efficiency of this engine is how many items can we connect to this cylinder. So if we were to put a carburetor can be connected to all of the surfaces except for the surface that connects to the crankshaft. So we can fit five carburetors on every cylinder. Um, now, a carburetor on its own does not make any power. So there is no power gain from a carburetor on its own. Where the power comes from is now um, adding in um, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Uh, to see, just going there, we're gonna go up one level. Is superchargers? If you click the more, we go into the slightly more advanced level, and engine fuel tanks. Uh, there is also an exhaust. Now uh, we'll go through the exhaust first. Now exhaust. If we take that that carburetor off there and put an exhaust on the top, you'll notice that has immediately increased the power of the engine. And that is your simplest way to increase power by putting that exhaust on. We've now got that one cylinder up to, whoops, we've dropped some here. It didn't like having no carburetor at all. So we'll have to have a carburetor on there, but at least one carburetor. We're to 5.61. So we've got some power just by putting um, some exhaust on there. So 2.3, 3.4, Oops, wrong, wrong item. 4, 4.51, 5.61. So we have increased the power just by putting some exhausts on there with one carburetor. So that is an immediate um, uh, benefit. But you'll notice if I put the car the exhausts onto the carburetor, if we take these all off. 
just for a second to go back to just our cylinder on its own if we put this uh, exhaust on the carburetor alone it has no effect so exhausts only work by being fitted directly to the cylinder um, but in reality they're not as effective as adding, adding other items to your um, carburetor so we'll have a look at that now if we um, look at what else is available so by going to the slightly more advanced blocks we've got two blocks now the supercharger and the engine's own fuel tank now the uh, and these combine and and you can obviously look at the ratio of these but with these connect if we look at the uh, supercharger first this connects to the carburetor and if we look straight away we can see um, we should start oh, we're not getting any uh, performance benefit at this second let me go through here and we put a fuel tank on there and we put a supercharger on there as well right we're starting we, we start to get benefit a supercharger will increase the power of something which creates power and it only connects to um, the carburetor if I try and go onto a cylinder it has no effect onto the crankshafts no effect it only works by being put onto a carburetor so superchargers work on the carburetors um, there isn't too many carburetors uh, too many superchargers don't have a great effect it they, they, uh, is having an effect but just not a massive effect they increase the power of the engine it is still better the more carburetors you get on a single cylinder effectively you can put more superchargers on so there we've got more superchargers how are we bear with me one second it's not coming up with the uh, uh the view correctly at the moment there we go and we're up to 14 power from this single cylinder now if we now put some um fuel tanks on there which also do increase the power of the the uh, um, engine so we're putting fuel tanks on here as well now we are up to a power of 159 so we've got 159 power from a single um, cylinder engine whereas with a we with a 15 cylinder engine we only got 35 so you can see that it is more efficient or uh, uh, also I think the fuel efficiency if we try and find the fuel efficiency is a lot better as well so now what you can see is that the efficiency of an engine is not based on just how many cylinders it's got but what you attach to that cylinder if you then start adding more cylinders in and doing the same sort of basis then you can increase this power even further and this is where experimentation comes uh, you need to find how many superchargers you need compared to fuel tanks um, generally you'll find you need to use quite a few fuel tanks compared to the number of um, superchargers and the other effect is it depends how many carburetors it is connected to at the same time so I'm just going to show an example where each supercharger is now connected to two carburetors and the fuel tank we'll just put on the top and it's gone up to 177 so exactly the same blocks in a different arrangement so all I did was I changed the um, uh, the supercharger and the uh, fuel tanks on these two blocks and it has increased the number uh, the, the overall power so you need to look at um, items how many carburetors it is connecting to at any one point um, we can then uh, and that is part of experimentation 
as I say, generally more fuel tanks than car uh, than superchargers, and get the superchargers connected to as many carburetors as you can at one time. Also, there is a cost value. All of these items cost in points, in resources, and uh, a supercharger is very expensive in scrap. A fuel tank is really cheap. So if you can also, in, in comparison, um, so it's better to have a lot. Uh, lots of um, fuel tanks than superchargers just on a resource point value and um, I think there's some various figures banded around uh, between 2 to 1, 5 to 8, um, some of in that, I can't remember the exact figure but generally you'll need twice as many fuel tanks to um, carb to uh, superchargers and here we've got eight fuel tanks for superchargers so we're about two to one um, okay so that's our power now one thing is this engine is still not running and that is because we have no oil on the ship so one thing you will need to do is go to resources and put a fuel storage at least one fuel storage so that there is some oil on this ship Otherwise, it won't produce any power. Now, as if we, um, if I put a controller on here as well at the moment, so I can actually uh, make the engine go. If we release this down, you'll notice that there is now actually the engine is working, and we have some propulsion. And you'll notice our value on the, the um, power is actually 283 so uh, i don't know why that is different to uh, what the engine block says you'll also notice temperature the temperature of the engine that will come into a, uh, account when we start doing uh, combat it has no effect at this um, the engine can't overheat but uh, uh, you you will find it's um, uh, eventually uh, difficult when you have Sorry, a higher temperature engine is more susceptible to infrared um, missiles. So keeping that temperature lower would be good for survivability against infrared missiles. Uh, okay, so this is, the, uh, we'll hold it there. That's the basics of building an engine. You can notice it's, you can just simply do it then, just to recap, by simply putting a, a cylinder on top of a crankshaft. Um, and then, or and then you can boost it up just by putting an exhaust. That's most probably the sim most simple engine you could build. To be frankly honest, is um, uh, an exhaust, uh, a cylinder, a crank, and an engine block. But it's not very efficient and doesn't produce much power and lots of smoke. So you then have to experiment with how many carburetors you need on your. Um, vessel on your cylinder to produce the optimum um, engine layout and there is other people who have produced uh, videos on optimal engine layouts and we may do that as a more advanced uh, uh, how to later on um, but yes please experiment that's part of this game is to experiment with uh, the engines and see what works for you um, and see what designs work for you if you've got any questions on that, please post below. If you also you go onto the official forums and ask about engines there, there is a lots of people who have done a lot of work on finding the optimum um, uh, engine layouts, and they can give more information than I have here. So until next time, keep playing, keep experimenting, and have fun. <laughs>